My dear friends in Christ, as I was preparing for the sermon today, and studying oh, many of the different topics that you could bring out, you can gather from the liturgy today, whether it be humility or Sunday observance. The thought came, kept coming back to me, those words in Scripture, and they were watching him. And I had to wonder and ask myself, how do you watch our Lord? People watch in many different ways. Some people come like a bump on a log and sit in church on a Sunday and they call that good. That's a certain type of watching. Others will come and perhaps be critical of their fellow neighbor, and they perform the type of watching that we read about the rulers and the Pharisees. That were sitting with Christ, and they were watching him. They were studying him. They were waiting for him to make a mistake. And then you have the watching of Mary Magdalene or the good thief. And they watched him. Mary watched him and was found to be at fault with Martha who requested our Lord to correct her. And our Lord said, Martha, Martha, thou art troubled about many things. Mary has picked the better part. It will not be taken away from her. Or the good thief, he watched, didn't he? At first, perhaps he didn't. As it says in Scripture, the thieves also mocked him. But then he started to observe. And he started to understand his predicament. He was on his way to go from time to eternity. And then he saw an opportunity. Perhaps it was his thieving heart that gave him the vision, or at least the beginning of the vision that he saw. And he heard another rebuke from the thief, Asinistrom, on the other side. And he rebuked the thief. He goes, don't you fear God? We are receiving our just punishment. This man has done nothing wrong. And after he watched, he prayed. He prayed a very imperfect prayer where it concerns prayers. There were better things to ask for. But having been a selfless world in all his life, all he could do was put forth his effort. And so, he went back to that vision he was watching, and he prayed the prayer that came to his lips. Lord, remember me when you enter your kingdom. And our Lord, our Lord gave him far more. Our Lord did not give him a thought, but gave him a place. Now today we are in church. Today we have an opportunity greater than the thieves. We have an opportunity to watch, yes, we can watch Mass. 
or we can really watch Mass and understand the mysteries that are unfolding before us. But this takes faith. And faith is not connected with emotion. Oh, emotion might have, might play in it, but it's not necessary. Oftentimes, the test of faith has no, if not negative, emotion. St. Alphonsus Liguori had the greatest doubts of faith when he was offering Mass, so much so that he was almost inconsolable. This was one of his greatest battles. But nevertheless, he persevered. And the outcome? Saint Alphonsus Liguori. But he made faith. And what is faith? Faith is, I believe it because he said so. Simply, it's that. I don't necessarily understand it all, but I believe it because he said so. He is the way, the truth, and the life. When I receive our Lord, I receive our Lord, and I believe that I receive our Lord because he said so. When I kneel in church and pray, and I make the effort, oh, perhaps it's like Mary, or perhaps it's like the good thief, But we make the effort to lift our heart and our mind and our soul to God and to petition him for the helps that we need. The benefit that we receive is far greater than we could ever dream. St. Alphonsus Liguori says that if we do not pray, we will not save our souls. I think it's important that we wrap, our, we wrap our mind around the concept of true prayer. And true prayer isn't coming to a big room with fancy windows and beautiful music, opening up a book, and we read a bunch of words that we don't really understand what they're talking about. Prayer must come from the heart. Things that come from the heart have to come from a place of love. But before we can love, we have to be willing to trust. And before we can trust, we must believe. There was, uh, there's a story which I'm sure you've heard before, many of you, if not all of that man who was in St. John Rivianney's parish and he came to church. Came and sat down in the back of church. And the priest observed him. And he saw this going on for days. The man had no prayer book in his hand. He just came in, sat down, back of church, after genuflecting, and just sat there. This happened day after day until one day the priest went up to him and says, Good sir, what do you do when you go to church? I don't see any prayer books in your hands. What prayers do you pray? And he says, I didn't know how to answer the priest. He says, what do you do? And he answered, well, I go in there and I look at him and he looks at me. Faith. We're in God's house. We're in his presence. We have an opportunity of a lifetime at this moment. Our Lord talks about this watching that we are required to do. Required, that's a strange word that almost implies a burdensome obligation. It is an obligation if, if we want to save our souls. But we are want to do it if we realize